Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Patreon gameplay and deck review. I am Silf, and if you guys would like to participate in this series, it is totally voluntary for you to head on over to my Patreon account and pledge an amount to support me in what I do as a perk for various levels of, 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 of pledge. You guys can get some rewards and uh, they involve gameplay review and deck reviews. So totally voluntary. If you guys want to help me out, these are just some tips that I can help you in return. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen, with Tinker Bell Panama here on some... Bellica. Looking really well here. Thank you very much for sending this in. I really do appreciate it. So Tinkerbell Panama looking for some Bellica tips. Now the very first off right before we even get into uh, the gameplay here is is the draft lobby. The draft lobby is when a MOBA game starts. That is when it starts. It's not actually right now. It's actually we're back in that draft lobby. So why would you pick Bellica? Well, let's talk about the... Just Bellica. She's super strong. She is. Honestly, Bellica is super strong. She has great control with her seismic assault. It's really quite reliable. You know, when, when you get used to her. Um, and that fantastic burst from seismic assault into your right click, uh, your void bomb, is really nice. So, you also have the void drone, which obviously, if you can... Actually, really, if you can get the hang of it and you get a good... Like, there's a lot of good Bellicas that put down that Void Drone in maybe not even an, an inconspicuous spot. But at a time when it's really not too obvious that they put it down. You know, they put it down right like the a split second after the, after the enemy team really hard engages. Then, you know, people are just so stuck with... With, um, with engaging that they kind of you know they kind of forget about that drone so she has a really strong spot in in the meta uh and you know what there are very s few times i would i would say that she's not viable um the only thing that really you have to think about is that she has very poor escape she has that seismic assault that you can put on the ground and just stun some uh, you know knock somebody up quickly while while you try to escape but it's really not much uh she doesn't have the best escape so picking her against somebody like a chimera especially on the uh, on the enemy team if you see you know then an, an, an enemy team pick chimera for their jungler um other mid laners like howitzer i would not like to go up against just because that mine into the missile and the long range poke would really be quite um, would really be quite scary, to be honest with you. So, maybe those two situations. High control teams. Uh, so, like, again, Chimera or a Sephirog or a Kwong or, um, or a Decker or a Narbash. Really high control teams that can take advantage of the fact that you have absolutely no escape. That's a little bit iffy. But then again, she can really put that pressure on them with that stun. So... I think I've said enough about that. Um, she's she's strong. She's a really strong pick. Uh, there's very few times I I, I think that um, that that she's that she's not viable. Now here in the early game, you start off with a mana potion and a healer token. That is nice. You have, you're up against a Yin here in the mid lane, uh, as that is quite unorthodox. Um, but you will be definitely very safe. Uh, so the mana potion instead of a health potion, I definitely agree with that. And then the health potion, or health token. Healer token, very, very strong. Absolutely, definitely something you should pick up um, as mid lane, especially as Bellica. Pretty much no matter who you're up against. If you're up against a more Gash, definitely get a health potion um, instead of the mana potion. Um, and just other high harass heroes. Again, don't I would not want to pick Bellica against a Howitzer. Um, 
At least that early game would be very dicey. Maybe maybe later on it wouldn't be too bad, but ugh, that would that, that would be scary. Um, I guess a more Gash actually she's not that bad. You just have to really can you have to really watch more Gash. And as soon as she's as soon as see she takes a couple steps forward. You can, you can just seismic assault on her because she's running straight towards you. It's pretty easy. And then Void Bomb and harass her that way. And don't let her get too close. Not too bad. But there you go. So one thing I am noticing here um, is the constant, the constant left mouse button. The constant basic attacking. Um, against a Yin, you can absolutely uh, push this lane hard and... Push this lane hard and punish her. Um, doesn't look like you are using your mana potion. Oh, you just did there. They didn't use it um, before. Make sure to use that. Get that value. And also the river buffs. Uh, nobody's gotten the river buffs yet. You could have still been in lane here uh, because you could have gotten those two river buffs. You could have got them right now as well at, the, at every odd minute mark. Three, five, seven, nine, etc., etc. You could have still been here and actually didn't need to go back. You went back with one CP, I think. Could have gotten another potion or something like that. Another mana potion, even. Um, but it's really, it's really up. It's, it, it is really up, up, up to you. Uh, get those, get those river buffs to keep your sustain in lane. Get that CP going um, a lot. You know, just kind of so that you can stay in there. You can just stay, farm up, get those last hits, which you aren't necessarily doing. Um, I, I, I am noticing that those last hits are the only times you get CP. So, I think a lot of people forget that. The only time you get card power is when you last hit a minion, when you kill an enemy hero or get an assist, and when, then just from the jungle and from your Amber Link. A small 100 CXP every 30 seconds, something like that, is very small. The only CXP you get is from last hitting minions on a, on a reliable basis, and of course when you get kills. So, focus on last hitting. Focus on last hitting. Um, at the six minute mark here, you should maybe even be at eight C uh, on eight C CXP. I'm feeling more like eight or nine right now. So just really focus on those last hits. Um, they are really, 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 really really important i would rather take um i would rather take um consistent last hits than than some kind of uh than some kind of harassment on my on against my fellow laner that's not going to go anywhere like that yin you do have a good chance uh with, with this yin of you know getting some good combos and 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 actually maybe getting a kill uh but Still, this constant CXP here, especially against that Siege minion there, easily be able to take him out. You do just that. And just really focus on, on, on CXP. The best the best late the best players in the world know they know how to farm. Es especially well. They know exactly when to last hit. They know exactly what minions are, are close to are close to death. They know exactly about that. The your your ability usage is really high. You're constantly using your your, your your abilities. Be more choosy with it. Choose when choose when to when to use it or not. Um, very nice game sense there for that twin blast. But just know that he has good burst potential. That is what twin blast is all about. There, um, you know, uh, basic attack into a tr into into a into a. Um, into a rapid fire and in, in, into into another basic attack with a grenade in there. It's a ton of burst damage, so I'm really not surprised he was able to to uh, to burst to burst you down. If you had landed the seismic assault into the void 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 bomb, maybe maybe you would have gotten him, him there. Uh, first card here is a burst engine. I love it. Love a burst engine. Um, a Solaris reactor maybe would even be better if you want a lot of mana regen. Especially since you're using a lot of abilities, but a burst engine, fantastic. Maybe even putting in a one point minor, um, one point one point spark uh, would be really good here. Hopefully that's that, that's what you are getting. But I would upgrade that first, just to be super duper picky. But I would get a ward first, 100% award, especially as a mid laner. 
Uh, you need to control vision around the middle. Make sh You have to ensure that you have vision on anybody trying to rotate, especially having that vision on the river buffs. See there, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you psychic assault into void bomb there. Um, if you did, fantastic. If you didn't, oh, that could, like, would have been an opportunity there to get some few basic attacks. And yes, dive the tower to maybe secure that kill. That would have been really quite good. So mini map awareness right now would would, would tell you um, would tell you that there are a couple enemies here that are coming in and taking out your uh, your carry. There is a seismic assault trying to take her out, but there is the there is the grenade. That's all what he is about. So just again at this point that was overextending in lane, not looking at not looking at your mini map to see who else is on the map. You would have you would have seen that I count us and twin blasts were nowhere to nowhere on the map. It must have been somewhere overextending in the mid lane is really really. Uh, dangerous as there's so many avenues for people to come in um, just just from everywhere so mid lane have to play play very safe ward placement boop right here is a wonderful spot so we can see so like right here and kind of right right here um, is is great you can see up there you can see the river buff you can see down there anybody jumping down into the raptor pit and then over here is pretty much the same right uh, it's 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 the same it's it's mirrored so just right here so you can see the river buff and stuff like that so right about there it's a great place for war placement um and again here you would have you would have seen that that twin blast coming maybe punishing him for you know going through the river on your side um so ward placement absolutely definitely a first uh a first pick here i guess a, gr a green buff just back off you know you, you know exactly what she's what she's going to try to do um just got to be careful careful with that again the the river buffs here you have mana potion you have the healer token to give you back that health so just play it safe bide your time use that mana potion that 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 uh that 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 healer token let that value kind of really get in at this point you're low on health um so just freeze the lane what that means is let the enemy minions kill your minions so that the enemy minions are pushing down your your lane that well that's not freezing but freezing is making is making it so that whenever where so that wherever the minions meet it's a stalemate one side doesn't win against the other it's just a constant stalemate one each 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 minion wave just destroys each other and they and they always meet they always end up meeting at the same spot so freezing the lane close by your tower so that you so that you can get um you know you can get that mana that mana regen to go to town your the 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 health token to go to town just kind of freeze it and play safe you can see that there's a lot of there's a lot of action here here in the mid lane. The twin blast um, is helping out the yin here, and the countess has even showed her face here a couple of times as well. So lots of action, even more incentivizing the use of wards here. Um, that's very very important. So at this point, you've chosen to upgrade your void bomb twice. Absolutely, uh, that's a very good um, choice as a. As that first upgrade in, in, in most casters main damage ability um, is significant. So like Howitzer's R2000 Missile, Bellica's Void Bomb. It's very valuable, that first upgrade. It can it can really do a lot. So that's really good. And then at this point, um, upgrading oh you've you've upgraded the bomb three times. So that's that's really gonna do some damage. Um, I believe the first upgrade into Seismic Assault brings up the stun duration from 0.7 to 1.1, something like that. That's incredibly valuable. That stun time uh, is really strong. So like right here, there are there are river buffs. There are river buffs. So you can totally get that sustained stay in lane, get that CP, and out farm the enemy the enemy people here with wards. You'd be able to do that safely. Definitely something you. Um, Anyway, needs need, needs to consider mid lane. That first three CP is always a ward, always a ward. Maybe if it's a more guess, you can get away with two healer tokens, uh, if she's being really aggressive or something like that. But it's always a ward. 
uh, because oh, it's so needed. It is absolutely so, absolutely so needed. So again, another burst engine. Burst engines are, burst engines are awesome. The mana regen, people really underestimate it. Yeah, it's only one CP. Uh, I would maybe like to see at least two CP of mana regen in the first card as a caster. Maybe even a Solaris Reactor that is three CP worth of mana regen. Um, but either way, mana regen's freaking awesome here in the early game. If you can get the those river buffs again it keeps i just keep saying the same thing just because it is really important and again uh, looking on the map here here is the um here is the revenant Ooh, good juking oh nice juking no no come back oh oh, oh nice juking nice juking he's gonna have his obliterate up right now oh but he's probably gonna have it oh no he's not so well done oh but the obliterate does land so um, yeah, I guess our Revenant really just got a, uh, that was a good job. That was a good job trying to cut off line of sight. Um, so, hey, I really can't, but well, well done. Should have maybe just jumped into the tower. Maybe the Yin would have killed you there. Probably. Probably. So that was probably the right decision. Um, well done. So yes, lots of action here in the mid lane, only, uh, helping out, um, the fact, only helping the fact that you really need these words here. Uh, right here another good defensive placement for a ward um in the mid lane is somebody put it right on this uh right on this ledge here right here kind of right on this right side so they can look down at the raptor pit look up there and obviously see anybody walking through here i i may i, I maybe prefer maybe to be a little bit like right here um but that's that's you're kind of helping out your 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 off laner too you're kind of helping them come, uh, you know, anybody who's trying to come in here to come in behind on your offlaner. Uh, but maybe, maybe just be a little bit more selfish and maybe more effective on saving your butt. Put it right here, right on this right side, right head side of this ledge here. That's a good spot. Lots of people really like, really, um, really like to do that. On this side, uh, really not much. Um, I mean, you could put it here, but I would much, I would just much rather prefer to put it here because then it'll see people coming through this way, anyways. So, uh, right there on this side, and then you, you have the choice to go on that, right over here, right here, or, or right there, right, right on the right side of that. Two fully upgraded burst engines, awesome. That is great. A lot of damage. Really works well with Velika because boy, does she hurt. Um, Yan right now is going to be able to start doing a lot of shenanigans. So yes, you do have to be careful. You have to be careful with that. Uh, remember she is still melee and a little bit extended melee with her windburn. So for her, you can just, whenever she tries to even step one foot towards you, just seismic assault void bomb back up. And then she just can't do anything. You know, she might try her, her, her whiplash to try to get close to you. And then she just, wherever she's going to land, you just seismic assault void bomb. Boom. Boom. You're really good with landing them. So you, know, you can really punish her hard. Uh, this Revenant here coming in. Um, really, not much she could do. There's, he, was, he was just, he was coming in there. Uh, he's probably going to get the obliterate. Oh, man. Revenant is, Revenant's pretty silly. Not going to lie. He's pretty silly. That obliterates. That obliterates. Obliterate is pretty silly, to be honest with you. Um, my personal opinion. Maybe it's a little too consistent. Maybe he's a. Maybe it's a little too consistent. A little too easy. Um. Maybe I don't know, but uh, it's pretty silly, regardless. So. It's pretty silly. So what else can we talk about? You've upgraded your seismic assault twice. Good. Yes. So that is very, very valuable. That 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 first upgrade, I do believe, goes. Yeah, 0.7 second duration, stun duration, and then a point to to 1.1, something like that. It's very valuable. Even upgrading your right click twice, and then your, um, and and then your seismic assault, tw se seismic assault. Twice, so it's both are level two. That might be a really, um, a really smart idea. Just because that stun will help out anybody else that tries to come and gank your target, so you can stun them for a little bit longer. Maybe help secure kills. That stun duration very, very powerful. So, um, but this way, 
that strong. The first couple upgrades into into again uh, the void bomb is going to be really really powerful. Three burst engines, nice. So three bur th three burst engines. Hey, that's that's solid. Um, the me the meta is definitely leaning towards um, leaning towards a few utility cards. Uh, well. At least probably a utility card in the in this sort of mid game that we're getting to now. Um, well, probably definitely is the definitely is the mid game, um, and definitely a ward. So, a hundred percent, without a doubt, absolutely need a ward from the first. The, your your fourth, fifth, and sixth C CP should be spent on a ward, guaranteed, hundred percent, no doubt in my mind, and keep that or. Or swap it out for a, for a more powerful one later on. Always having a ward um, as a caster without a doubt. Uh, looks like uh, oh, thanks for that that uh, revenant here. You're just gonna have to. Oh, oh, he did. He he did you. Uh, oh, nice. So yeah, you're gonna be able to to escape there, no problem. Um, no mana again. So you're forgetting to use your mana potions. That's the um, that's the hard part about potions. Um, it's, it is kind of hard to f remember to use them, so just use your mana potions. Remember you those active abilities and active cards uh, that are really that are really powerful. So yes, the meta at this point absolutely award 100 110 percent. Followed by I would a burst engine would be absolutely okay. Uh, some people would say that's weird, especially on Bellica with her right with her void bomb giving mana back on minion kill. But it is very very powerful as a combo on enemy heroes with the seismic assault. So you're not necessarily always doing that. Regardless, I would always put some mana regen on any caster in the early game, as they just have mana issues. Um, and the sustain that and the sustain that even just a little bit of mana regen gives is super powerful, especially. Since you can use that mana regen to get more more control over the mid lane and the river buffs, which then further gives you more mana regen that gives you more control and just a snowball effect that I think a lot of people forget about and they really take for granted. Absolutely, hundred percent, hundred percent take for granted. So ward into a burst engine, absolutely a okay. okay. Then at that point, my in my experience, you're probably going to um, nicely done. Yeah. Nicely down there. You're probably, in my experience at that point, if you are ahead and can get away with another six point damage card, like a burst engine, go for it. But at this point, something like an adamant edge for a little bit of health, especially, especially, especially on somebody like a Bellica that has little to no escape, would be very, very powerful. Nicely done, absolutely obliterated that, that Bellica. And now at this point, just. Just run away. Just run away. Just run away because you know that that Sarah has the Greystone to 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 contend with, and you can't trade. You, you can't sit there and trade with a with a Sarah in um, in melee range. So just get out of there. Wait till your Scything Assault and Void Bomb are off cooldown. Turn around. Do your do your burst, and then at that point you can reassess the the the, the situation uh, there. So that's a little gameplay tip for that point. So, yeah, so then that third card, that third card can definitely be like an Adam and Edge would be very valuable, just for a little wee health, either just that one CP of health or have another upgrade of health in there, something like that. Um, or if you're kind of behind, so to speak, um, on Bellica, Teleblink. Teleblink, Blink Charm, but a Teleblink, absolutely, especially if you get a Solaris Reactor, that'll help with that mana regen, um, because you got a Sage's Ward. Probably a Sage's Ward for that health, um, because the mana ma ma mana would be more viable on, on Bellica for sure for in, in in the Brawler's Ward or something like that. Um, but it's really up to two person seismic assault. Nice, get that Yin. Absolutely, you are you are running back. Good job. Yes, you know that um, you kind of whole burst thing has gone, especially not with the um, with the help of your of your allies. But unfortunately, uh, the enemy team collapsed here, and your team's kind of kind of fall apart so that's that definitely smart move careful with especially with the with, yeah okay because of because yeah that twin blast pretty scary if, if, especially if they're accurate um at that first so yeah so a teleblink absolutely definitely something very very strong i've seen stasis gems on bellica which that would be that i mean, that that's a really good option um because if you can position well if you can position well um 
you know, you can deal a ton of damage. You can deal a ton of damage. Be there in, be there in in fights, and then when the enemy team kind of you know does their thing on you or engages on you or whatever, you can use that stasis gem to just invulnerability for two and a half seconds while they waste abilities on you, waste time on you. Your friendly team can take the can take that advantage on them. Plus, it can reduce the obviously your cooldowns are being are being reduced. Um, you know, during those two, two and a half seconds, so you can use that time to just wait it out into another seismic assault, into a void bomb, boom, you're done. So on a Yin's ultimate, Yin's ultimate, remember, slows down projectiles, so you're only giving her ammunition to use against you as you're basically attacking into her, um, into her ultimate. So just be careful with that, um, as it can hurt. It definitely can't hurt. I mean, it's not that big of a deal on, on a caster, but if you're playing a carry, for example, don't just sit there and shooting into into a Yin ultimate. She's just going to whip those right back at you and just kill yourself. Really. So, a 9-point burst engine as... Okay, so you're going to into some 12-point cards. A lot of power. Yeah. So, I mean, if you can get away with it on Bellica, she's going to hurt a lot. The issue is that her survivability is minimal without a teleblink, without a blink charm, without a stasis gem. Those are the ones that I would definitely, definitely recommend. So here, give me a line of seismic salt into the void bomb. Absolutely, you can, and then you can you use her ultimate. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Didn't even need to use her ultimate. Nice. Belica, fantastic counter to Countess. Um, I think, anyways, as uh, she really, really often, she, you know, uses her abilities. Use her abilities, drains mana really quick. If you can survive that, especially with putting down your your um, your your drone, <laughs> seismic salt into that, and just like you did. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, I think Belica works really well with uh, Countess a lot of times. So yeah, um, because of her sustainability um, and her lack of mobility. A lot of a lot of high elo and especially competitive and competitive guys. I haven't seen too many of that, uh, too much, um, too much of that. But at least the high e e elo players, um, they put some adamant edges on there. Um, I've even seen you know analyt of the veterans stasis gems for sure. I've seen on Bellica. Tell a blink, absolutely. I've seen on Bellica. Um, it's not, yeah. So. Obviously a ward, again, more more so, a, definitely a Sage's ward instead of a Brawler's ward, for sure. Um, that That's what I've seen. So, Sage's ward, very meta. Uh, into some Adam and Edges is very is very meta. I would I, I, I still would like to see maybe a Solaris Reactor or some Burst Engines in there. Uh, I think it's very valuable if, if you can get away with it. Um, and then some, yeah, again, Teleblink, Blink Charm, etc., etc., so... There you go, and then she, her, her, her damage, her damage, um, is there regardless. She does, she does a good amount of damage. She's a burst caster, um, so your seismic assault and your and and your and your void bomb's gonna deal a lot of damage with even just a little bit of power. So what you can do is use that fact to your advantage. Oh, nicely done. Oh, nicely done. Uh, hopefully you can. Um, cut them off here can you good game sense i um especially with, with 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 some of these kind of rotations and trying to catch people off um good game sense there uh just sometimes the mini map just kind of seeing seeing what 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 the mini map is doing etc etc so you were heading to the left lane to maybe help out your well to kind of cut off that twin blast but you definitely could have head on head on over there to help um, to help your team. It was a 3v2 with a very weak Twin Blast, so um, you definitely could have head over there and done that. So maybe a little communication there with your team. Um, it's obviously the 28 minute... Oh, yeah, you do it! oh, nicely done. So again, good game sense when it comes to um, taking taking down low, low, low targets and stuff like that. So um, definitely, yeah, you got that sense. Absolutely. So in terms of the overall strategy of Paragon, like the overarching gameplay, like game business, Raptors have, have, have been up. Um, we haven't seen them them secured at, at all. So just kind of, you can definitely be a force force for that. You know, when it comes to 15 minute mark, 
uh, you know, uh, or 10, 10 minute mark, sorry, you can just like attack raptors, attack raptors, secure a kill, attack raptors, attack raptors, attack raptors, like you can, you can still be a force in solo queue, um, no matter the, no matter the, the elo, just be like, attack raptors, like you can be that voice, um, that, you know, just to push people to, to kind of do these objectives that can win games, and that's definitely what raptors in our prime here, so, um, grouping up, uh, rotating to, to maybe secure a tower, especially as, as the mid laner, um, haven't seen you do that. I don't think, um, especially helping out your 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 off lane. Off lane is really kind of like your secondary duty, securing the river buffs so that you can go to that to that to that left lane um, and help out your your graystone here. Um, that's really really strong, especially against a revenant who's going to naturally be able to to snowball. Right, that's kind of his whole point. You really have to punish him, um, as so as as the mid laner, it's it, it is really your 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 job to do that, um, and obviously help help your off laner. It is a one v two after all, so so that that is a good consideration. Oh my goodness, you're gonna obliterate this uh, this countess, yeah. So, uh, death to salt. Good. Turn around. Oh, so close. So close. So, uh, may maybe she was already dead there because she was going into the tower trying to get that kill. Maybe going on that twin blast would have been a smart idea, but got the kill, secured that kill. Um, that's good. You are maybe a bit bloodthirsty, uh, ch ch you know, chasing kills, chasing over extended targets, uh, stuff like that. Uh, securing kills is good. Um, but at this point, uh, you are even on, in the siege department. Uh, both of you guys have lost a tier two. Um, but that more overarching game sense here um, could maybe could could maybe be be worked on. Grouping up to take down towers, getting a pick, getting getting raptors. There's always kind of like a you know there's always kind of like a hot like a like, like a priority list. Um, you know game changing game changing objectives like orb prime, orb prime raptors, um, and then you know securing securing siege advantages towers. Securing kills, winning, winning lane duels, etc. etc. So like it's kind of like it's kind of like a tier, and you're always trying to think: Can I, can I do this one? No. Can I do this one? No. Can I do this one? Oh yes, I can. Let's go do that. There's always a higher, like really high priorities, and and in there, always, always trying to farm, always trying to secure vision advantage, um, and here again, no ward. Um, especially in the mid lane, like, grouping up like this. Um, you, oh, you, you do have numbers of edges. Oh, can you do it? Oh, <laughs> good. Woo! Nice, 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 nice. Um, oh, gets the Revenant, man. Revenant's, Revenant's pretty dumb. So what was that one? Tainted Magic. Nice. Um, on Abelica, um, I maybe like to see a stace gem again teleblink before a tainted magic uh what this is going to do is yeah it's going to make your burst your seismic salt into your void bomb very effective um and that not only is it going to deal a ton of damage but it's also going to eh, it's going to tick during the whole duration from the start of the seismic assault to the end of the void bomb it's going to kind of refresh that four second duration yeah that's that is going to hurt a lot what it's also going to do is uh, make your void drone whenever it attacks somebody do that so if, if, if you can get a good void drone yeah maybe it can it can it can affect the entire team um tainted magic maybe not maybe i'm not uh, maybe i'm not that crazy on on abelica i think right now a teleblink or stasis gem would work really well really really well in fact um or especially um at the with the amount of mana that you're using um an infinity stream now that it works now 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 that, that it works that the less mana you have the more mana regen it grants you just so that especially on bellica yeah if 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 you want you can really just all the time seismic assault into void drum uh or void bomb seismic assault into, vo in, into void bomb seismic assault into void bomb and just always do it um and you know, well at least more so do it oh and your alt yeah he was full mana so unfortunately that's there. And it looks like... Yeah, the count is, is going to take you out there. Focusing... Um, well, that Revenant did alt yours, so... Um, 
Playing it a little bit, a little bit defensively there, just to kind of wait out, see who wins that duel there, and then based on that, you can either be like, oh, got a piece out, or, or you know, kill the enemy, Reve kill the enemy revenant, or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So a little bit de defensive there. It's always better to play defensive when you are at a numbers disadvantage. Um, yeah, maybe trying to kill the enemy carry there. That is that is highly valuable. I would have maybe. Um, backpedal there try to try to duel out that that countess which you definitely could um could have won there but that's just being very nitpicky that's just kind of my little bit of advice so tainted magic it is interesting if you get a good void drone again and, and people are using their abilities and he has that that could that that, that could have that could have definitely have, have have some value i think they're just simply better cards i think so Right now, uh, you have been running into mana issues, so Infinity to Stream again, like like I said earlier, would, would be good. Uh, but you're starting to get into high hero levels, so your mana pools getting big, your mana, your natural mana regens getting getting larger. So, nah, it's kind of situational, I guess. Um, you know, uh, I'm just stuck on. I'm, I I I I think my biggest my gut is just telling me like stasis jam, Patella blink, uh, I, and I, I just I, I I really can't can't get over that. It just really it works really well. It works really well um, with good map awareness and wards. Um, you can see people coming, so you can tele blink. You can tele blink, you know, in the other direction and and help you get away. Or uh, which is really terrifying on on Bellica having uh, having a Bellica teleblink forward teleblink towards you secure that seismic assault into a void bomb and you're like oh great so you're stunned for forever and then you know you have a whole bunch of damage and then her the rest of her team blinks forward or just comes forward and takes you out it's very strong so like right here teleblink forward into secure the kill there and then that graystone could have landed on top of her he probably would have killed her there so it's a perfect example right there maybe that would have happened maybe not but at least it could have got some damage oh and then the quan could have killed her so there you go so that's a perfect example of, um, of how a teleblink would have changed the whole dynamic here in this left lane you would have been able to push this lane even 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 more freely um and then you guys could have grouped up mid and then push that down like that so so nice. Uh, you are defending these lanes, th these lanes while pushing these lanes well. So that is good. Um, somebody does have to do that as a caster. You have good wave clear. That is um, that is fantastic. You've upgraded the drone four times and the seismic assault twice. Um, I do have something. I do have something back here telling me that uh, the the drone is really is really actually quite effective. Um, because I can recall sometimes when I was like, man, this enemy Bellica, like, I just have no mana all the time. And it's just like, ugh. I do remember that. Um, so at this point, just get out of there. It's a it's a lost cause. Get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. Get, uh, and you missed that. He's going to be... He, he's he, he, It's a 1v1. You don't want a 1v1 a, a Revenant. That's just... It's just well, like... Actually, right now you probably could actually burst him down, um, but uh, ugh, scary, scary stuff. I do recall quite a few times, like some Bellica's, like, man, my mana's always gone, and her alt is just terrifying. I do remember that, but I, I think it was more just my own mana usage issues, and, um, and just it being effective anyways, even level two or three. My gut is telling me upgrading Seismic Assault is much more valuable than upgrading the drone. The drone would prob probably be last. Yes, I wouldn't keep it at 1. Like, level 1. I, I, I wouldn't keep it at level 1. Um, but I wouldn't, up I wouldn't upgrade it fully and my Seismic, uh, seismic Assault not. Um, there, it's a, it was a 2v1. Just get out of there. Just get out of there's really nothing you can do as a relatively short range caster nothing you could do just retreat spend spend cp uh rotate over uh, against this um this twin blast here really not much really not much you can do divine shield interesting 
Divine Shield. So against Abelica, again, she has little escape. Um, so any stuns or something like that on you to maybe secure your, you know, to secure you in place. Um, and then so that the enemy team can take you out. Um, that could be valuable. Again, I think perhaps that there are just more valuable cards than Divine Shield. So, like, I would take Stasis Gem over over Divine Shield for sure. Especially against... Especially against... Oh, I just realized the, the enemy team has four carries. Um, I mean, I've, I've seen I've seen them all, but... Wow. Um, like, a Countess ult, you get... Like, if she, you know, if she... Dark Tide into Dark Tide and Blade Siphon in, into a blink on into Shadow Slip on you or Shadow Slip into your low on health and you know she's just gonna use her ultimate. Just stay the gem and just forget about it. Like just just forget about it. Um because the Countess is gonna just blade siphon this this um this this divine shield off of you. Her dark tide's gonna do a ton of damage, her shadow slip into it into a um, or even, actually, she's probably just going to Shadow Slip onto you. That'll take off the Divine Shield into the next three abilities, and then you're just dead anyways. Um, so, a Divine Shield... Unfortunately, it, like, it's great on a Gideon. It's great on a Gideon that you can Teleblink up, or just teleport up, um, use, your, use your alt, and then you know that the first ability that hits you, likely a stun, will just get... will just stop. So, um... It's great on somebody like a Gideon, somebody like Channeled Ultimates. Um, it's great. Um, yeah, I suppose on I suppose on a Bellica, but then again, I just I, I would much rather prefer a a, a, a Stasis Gem. So, um, yeah, that's just kind of my 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 two cents again. Um, it definitely has its place. Maybe maybe I would um, I, I would maybe have these two as an option as a Stasis Gem. Um, Stasis Gen and Divine Shield uh, uh, as an option, I would put, you know, I would make, I'd make the Stasis Gem an eight point card with some upgrades in it and just have Divine Shield and Stasis Gem as an option. So if you don't, if, you know, if there isn't, if there isn't a crazy, like this right here, that's terrifying. Revenant and Countess, the, you know, you can Stasis Gem out of his Scar and Obliterate and then you're like, ah, 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 and then you just, walk away, right? You can stasis a gem from the Countess shenanigans uh, against the enemy Crunch. Yeah, you can just stasis a gem with Crunch because you know he's just going to do a 1-2-3 combo, right? Um, you can stasis a gem out of Quang alt, kinda. Stuff like that. Um, stuff like that. Things that are like, okay. Chimera. Stasis gem off of this thing. Oh, you do get a stasis gem! Hey! There you go! Nice! So you got... Uh, you got a stasis gem. Nice. Stasis gem and a divine shield. So at this point, <coughs> teleblink. 100% teleblink. Uh, Tina Magic. That is really interesting. Um, teleblink is an option. May maybe maybe I would take a uh, Tainted Magic um, as an option, I guess, on, on a Bellica. Um, and maybe, like, maybe, yeah, maybe that, that, that Infinity Stream. Um... But then that doesn't really make sense because they're kind of both completely entirely different. So I'm not sure. So at this point, oh, they have that. Oh, Stasis Gem, very nice. But then there's no follow up. Yeah. So against a against an a an or prime push, defensive. Clear clear the minion wave. Go back. Clear the minion wave. Stay back. Clear the minion wave. Stay back. That's. That uh, you just that's what you gotta do. Clear the minion wave. It stays. Just stay safe. Weather the storm. Weather the storm. And um, and that's that's exactly just what you gotta do. Weather it. Play safe. Kill the minion wave. Stay back. That's it. Yeah, I mean, if one of the enemy team really dives hard into your inhibitor and you can manage to get a good wombo combo on them or something like that, sure. Um, Definitely don't step foot. Don't step foot past past this. Don't step foot past that because you just want to kill the kill the mini wave and just stay back. Stay back, especially from an enemy revenant. Has such an easy time with his dumb obliterate stuff like that. But they are forgetting about their left lane. Ha 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 ha. Interesting. So um what Wu Kong 
honestly, what Wukong has uh, has taught me is that split pushing is actually a really good. Oh, so close. Oh, so close. Oh man, so close. What Wukong has taught me is that uh, split pushing against a um, or prime. Push if you can be really elusive with 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 a stab link and the rest of his kit. Um, it has it's actually surprisingly effective. Honestly, it's a uh, very it's quite effective because you pull you pull enemies to have to deal with this and they have or prime buff and they're like ah I don't want to deal with this with this Wukong split pushing when I have or prime buff because they know that, just, that he's just gonna get away right. Um, it is effective. Um, so, and that's, that just kind of shows you right there, um, why that, why that is, um, effective. So, at this point, yep, just weather the storm. Weather the storm. Oh, oh, they doesn't have our prime. Okay. Yep, good job. Nice. You were able to, you were, you were able to, um, to do that burst, and that, that, that worked well. So, at this point, at this point, um, mid lane inhibitor is really hard to deal with. Um. It's, it's not overly bad because you have to always kind of tend the mid lane, but it's not that bad because then that forces people to be in the mid lane, which then gets you a nice spot to rotate out, you know, rotate, rotate across the map. And no matter where you are, always going to the mid lane to deal with this constant push from the super minions um, isn't, all, isn't overly all that bad. So it's not the worst thing, um, but... It is definitely kind of kind of kind of annoying to deal with. Uh, Shino, dude, just try to get the inhibitor, but oh, that's so close. Oh, and Rice Rice does go down. So yeah, at that point, um, at this point, getting one of these inhibitors down, trying to uh, claw claw back, is definitely a um, is definitely a a, a smart move. Um, yeah. So I don't know, just getting options, I guess. Getting options. Um, and some sustainability. Um, you have kind of like a utility um, sustainability. Like, oh, nice. Absolutely obliterated. It's like you can block a spell and you can be immune for two and a half seconds, but the rest of the time, you have no health. Um, this, abil this ability armor is basically negligible. Um, you, have no you have nothing else. So I, especially on Abelica, would probably recommend at least three to six CP of health, at least. So 180 to 360 additional health. That really, really helps. Really, really helps um, on her. And I think I think I've said everything there is for me to say. Stace gem is fantastic. Maybe a Stace gem, is uh, you know, a divine shield is an option. But then even then, I, I would probably pick Stace gem over over divine shield. Um, take out the take out the very situational nature of divine shield and just get and then instead have six of this eight cp be be health and then the other damage like that that would probably be be better um so that's that award basically award and some health or something uh tainted magic that's okay yeah you know what tainted magic um with an option of a thick blood a thick blood um Relica doesn't necessarily have the opportunity to um, to spread thick blood to a lot of people, but uh, I think a thick blood as an option against tainted magic uh, would be very very strong. So what what Belica has a great opportunity to do? Um, oh, just get obliterated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So sixty cp sixty cp in. Yep. Yep, that's terrifying. Youch. Woo! Um, what Belica has the opportunity to do is burst down that, that high priority target. So, um, in a in a team fight, what she can do is is maybe overextend, kind of, but just you know, get into that sweet that sweet spot to. Seismic Assault and Void Bomb, the enemy phase, you know, the enemy carry, um, high priority targets so that, so that that forces the enemy support or just phase herself to heal herself, right? But then that's because you, ha because you have thick blood, 
right? That is reduced significantly. Um, and that's that. That's actually probably what I would do. I would do Tainted Magic as an option against Thick Blood. And Thick Blood would probably be what I would choose to do. Um, but I would probably choose to do more of the time. Probably something like that as woo, everything goes all... All leggy there. So let's pause this and just kind of, just kind of, yeah, just wrap up maybe. Um, yeah, so Stace Gym, of course. Divine Shield, maybe not. Uh, definitely a ward. The six point card could be your ward or something like that. Um, Teleblink, absolutely. Teleblink for sure. Um, Tainted Magic, yeah. Or a Thick Blood. Or a Thick Blood if the enemy team has a Decker. A Muriel and one and you know one um one carry because the the thick blood does work on work against life steal uh it is quite common for for other brawlers um and and frontline to have quenching scales which like Thick Blood's almost, you almost always see it. You almost always see Thick Blood in, in higher, e, in, in higher elos and, and in, in the competitive scenes. So, thick, Tainted Magic would be the least equipped option between Thick Blood and this, but I would, I, I would still do it. I would, I would honestly still do it. And at this point, you need Ability Pen. Uh, Magna Lens is fantastic. Uh, for Bellica or an Infinity Stream again, so you can really just pump out those those high damaging, um, highly effective, um, you know, Seismic Salt and Void Bomb. Um, but just remember, you need 160 to 180 power, and only then is Ability Pen worth it. Only then is Ability Pen worth it. In the early game, power is better. Power is better. So you have to wait even 150 power. Even 150 power, 100, yeah. So at least around there, 150, 160 power, then you can get ability pen, and then it is better than power. So um, the ability pen on a Magna Lands or maybe an Infinity Stream, but then you have to really make sure you have enough power. There you go. So yeah, Sage's Ward, sure a burst engine. That'd be that'd be fantastic. Amulet of the Veteran, a Thick Blood, Teleblink. Stasis gem. Yeah, actually, this twelve point card would be the, would be the Magna lens. So something like that. There you go. That's my tips. Hopefully, that's uh, this was helpful. Um, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Any tips or any suggestions? Um, any any tips or suggestions that I've forgotten or I'm or I'm completely off my rocker a, a, a boat. Um, you know, I am not the most experienced mid laner, uh, the most experienced Bellica player either. But actually, the couple last couple of times I have played Bellica, it's been very successful, and I actually do have a hero building guide um, to record uh, for her. So I actually have gone through a bit bit of a mid lane phase um, this time um, recently. So I, I have actually improved a bit, uh, but still, it is my least played, my least um, skilled. Uh, role. So if there's anything you guys have um, in terms of tips and stuff, please let me know down in the comments. Again, if you guys like would, would like to participate in this series and of course would like to um, support me, totally voluntary, um, please head on, head on over to my Patreon account uh, so you can take a look at what rewards for what pledging levels and all that stuff. So thank you guys very much. Please guys, like this video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it. Share it with the community as I'm sure people could learn from it. And of course, subscribe. If you guys like this content or you simply found it useful, please subscribe so we can do it for you in the future. Till next time, like always guys, stay optimistic and positive.